Hi there, this is Mr. McConley at BKW Physics. And today, we're gonna to be determining Planck's constant. And I'm gonna show you an apparatus and I'm gonna show you some pretty uh, interesting math. And I'll show you how it's all done. So, let's get started down here. So on the table here in front of us, I have the Planck's constant determination device. And let me just run through with you how this is all hooked up. So first of all, we have a power supply, DC power supply. It's feeding up to here, the, um, the Planck's constant determination device. We have these two wires are connected off to the side to the ammeter so it can read the flow of current in amps. And starting from here, going up to the top is the voltmeter. So here's the way it works. Right now, I have the power supply turned up so it can supply, I think I'm at about nine volts, but I'm not gonna use all that nine volts. This knob right here, this red knob, helps me control the voltage. So here's what I'm doing in a nutshell. Electricity is coming into this device and I'm gonna supply a little bit of electricity at a time. And right now I have this knob set to the 470 nanometer setting. What that means is over here there's an LED, a light emitting diode. And this light emitting diode, it's a, it's a light bulb, this light emitting diode um, has a wavelength of light that it gives off of 470 nanometers when it lights. So when the correct amount of voltage and current is supplied to this and it reaches that threshold, the light will turn on and I know I'm in the right spot. That's gonna later help me calculate Planck's constant. So here we go. I'll turn this up slowly. And I did it kind of fast. So I'm moving the voltage up. You can see the needle moving. And right about, right about uh, a little bit further, right there. The light bulb is lit up. So, taking a look at my meter right now, since I'm set on the three volt scale, I'm at 2.5 volts. So 2.5 volts. That's when this light of 470 nanometers lit up when I gave it that much voltage. All right, great. So let's move to the board now and we can kind of work through what all this means. So. Planck's constant in the reference table, the physics reference table, is 6.63 E negative 34 joules per second. It's a constant, and we use it for the following two equations in Regents Physics. We use it for E, energy of a photon, E, is H times F. So if we know the frequency of a photon, remember photon means light, so if we know the frequency of the light, and we times it by Planck's constant, it'll tell us in joules how much energy the light has. Likewise, if we know the speed of light, which we all do from Einstein, it's 3 E8 meters per second. If we know the speed of light and we know the wavelength of the light, we can divide those, times it by Planck's constant, we'll also arrive at the same number. This is just two ways to figure out the energy of light. So different light colors have different amounts of energy. Okay, great. We're gonna focus in on this equation, and I boxed both of these because they're both on the reference table. But instead of using energy in joules like we normally do in physics class, we're going to do in EV. EV means the charge of an electron times the voltage. And in this case, it's the voltage in order for the light to just be emitted. So we just found that a second ago. All right, so here we go. Let's take this equation and change it slightly. So instead of E of a photon, we're going to say EV. And we're still going to have HC over lambda. That's going to remain the same. But since I'm solving or I want to know Planck's constant, I'm going to rearrange it. So I'm going to make it H is E times V times lambda over C. That's just an algebraic re rearrangement. So let's start plugging in some numbers. So I go to my physics reference table and I find that the energy of an electron is 1.6 E negative 19 coulombs. And I better move the camera at this point. Probably going off the screen. Not quite, but I was almost there. 
we'll go like that at this point. All right, so we have 1.6 E negative 19 coulombs. That's the charge of an electron. The voltage in this case, we just did it, and we found that that voltage was 2.5 volts. That was found by determining, by turning it up slowly. The wavelength is 470 E negative 9 meters. That just corresponds to the color. It looked kind of like a purplish blue to me. This is the first LED that we tested, but that we can actually test a bunch of different LEDs. And the speed of light is 3 E8 meters per second. So when I go ahead and take my calculator and do some calculations, which I did ahead of time, and I plug this in, this times this times this divided by this, it actually will give me 6.27 E negative 34, and that's coulombs times volts times meters over meters per second, so meters cancel. Anyway, this all simplifies. It's 6.27 E negative 34 joules times seconds back from the reference table. So what we have found, this is what we found, we found that in our case, we think Planck's constant is 6.27 E negative 34 joule seconds. So for 470 nanometer light, 2.5 volts, got the light to turn on, boom, that's what we calculated. Now how far off is it? Well, we could do a little um, percent error if we wanted to, but just, just take a look. This is 6.27 E negative 34. The original Planck's constant was 6.63 E negative 34. And I can just tell you that it's, that's not off very far because you're talking, you know, 34, the decimal place has to move over 34 places. So if you're only off by a couple digits, 34 places off, your percent error is gonna be pretty small in this case. So what we have ended up finding here is we have determined Planck's constant. And we could continue this by testing the, uh, the next LED, which was 505 nanometers, and I did test it, it was 2.6, and then we could do the math, which I didn't do. We could do the next one, the next one, the next one, and we could average them all or whatever. But basically what we're doing is we're, just to summarize here, we're seeing what voltage will cause a photon light to be emitted and when we do that, we can then calculate Planck's constant. We're almost like working backwards because we always take Planck's constant for granted and just like, oh yeah, just plug it in and it works. This is backing up and saying, here's why it works and here's how it works. And we can actually physically test and come up with that number. So for today, we have calculated Planck's constant using the Planck's constant determination box. This is Mr. McConley. And this is BKW Physics.